Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the program, Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. And my name is William Kumwembe. And in the program today, we look at prospects for inflation trends in the year 2024, as 2023 remained one of the years to forget in as far as inflationary pressure is concerned, seen at 28.8% as at December 2023. Also in the program, we speak with Minister of Tourism on Malawi's performance in as far as uh, hospitality and tourism sector is concerned in the year 2023. We have these and other stories. Stay tuned. Insuring and saving with Old Mutual means growing crops, growing jobs, growing a future. Creating mutual futures, your money invested for the good of all. And welcome. This is business time, and in our main story in the program today: inflation, the rate at which commodity prices change at a given period in an economy, remained on an upward spiral in the year 2023, seen at 28.8 percent as of December. Now, this has powered more pressure to other fundamentals of the economy, including the buying power, which continued to dwindle as prices of commodities remained up. Now. Economists say in the short to medium terms, we should expect inflationary pressures to persist largely due to the elevated debt levels in as far as public debt is concerned, as well as uh, the lean situation in which we are as a country due to low food supply on the market. Our journalist Chimwemwe Mangazi has been speaking to some economists and reports. Economist Marvin Banda says government debt-led spending is an overlooked contributor to rising inflation. He also lamented effects of imported inflation as Malawi remains a predominantly importing nation. It's not really shocking if you look at the, the global trends of inflation. But then what's the shocking thing is the, the policies that have been put in order to rein in inflation have not worked or some of them are a tad bit unrealistic. For example, it is the, man, the mandate of the Reserve Bank to, to rein in inflation, and so they set targets. So in the last uh, monetary policy meeting, the Reserve Bank set a target, me, medium-term target of 7%. If you look at the historical data, you, you will notice that there hasn't been a single time where inflation has been as low as 7% in the past 20 to 30 years. So it, 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 begs to, 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 it begs the question, what is it that we're trying to achieve? And what is it that these policies are trying to achieve? If you, if, if, if you look at what policy makers are saying about the inflation, they are, they're, they're saying it's twofold. Part of it is, is imported, the, the other is manufactured in Malawi. The imported one, they say that we, we don't have anything. To, to, to do when that happens because we're looking at pressures of devaluation, we're looking at wars and we're looking at shutdowns during the COVID. But then when it comes to the inflation that is home-based, I think that one we can have we can have an effect on it. Because if you look at the, the past five years, the, the 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 mean the mean inflation has been well over 12. If you if you consider with last 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 year's inflation then it's, it's shooting to about 14.3, which is which is an astronomical figure. That's that's double the the, the, the target. Now, with, with with that type of inflation that's in this environment, it makes it difficult for, for anyone to, to, to make any meaningful gains. Vice President of the Economics Association of Malawi, Betha Bangara Chikadza, says food remains the main driver of inflation and low agriculture output could pile extra pressure. Inflation has been stable for some time. You know, it was rising, but not as much as uh, it is now. But uh, recently, I think from 2021, uh, 22, you know, we've seen up to this year, inflation has been rising. And um, like I said, it's something that no one can control because we've been facing a lot of, you know, problems. We've seen from the cyclones, we had Anna, we had Freddie, we had Gombe, and all these contributed to a lot of things that destroyed most of the food items. 
because basically our inflation is um, uh, food driven. So the moment, you know, food has been destroyed, the farms have been destroyed, then we automatically know that, you know, food prices will rise and inflation is going to pick up. The outlook, I can say in the short term, uh, inflation is going to st is still going to be up and high, but by and by, like I said, I think we're talking of mega farms. We've seen investments, you know, uh, being made to at least to grow enough food. So as long as we make the necessary deliberate policies, you know, for example, growing enough food, making sure that the maize is available, making sure that food is available, especially in lean season then we'll be able to contain inflation. And as long as we contain food, you know, prices, then we can always, always, you know, term the other part of inflation. Uh, the government can at, at least plan better going forward. You know, if we justify mega farming, then we'll make food, you know, any staple food available. And the moment that we have, you know, we flood the markets with maize, Automatically, food prices will go down because the moment maize prices are going up, everything goes up. And then, you know, we also have to be mindful of the usual demand management tools for addressing inflation. You know, we've seen a rising, you know, um, a rising date. And so the moment we start, you know, managing these tools, the demand management tools for addressing inflation, the usual ones, you know, raising interest rates just to contain, you know, the borrowing, then I think we'll be on the right track. RBM spokesperson Mark Longu says the Monterey Policy Committee of the Reserve Bank of Malawi is expected to meet this week to, among other things, project inflation outlook. Tourism Minister Vera Kamtukure says Malawi's tourism sector bounced back to pre-COVID levels thanks to interventions that the government and private sector players deployed in the year 2023. This comes as the country is preparing to host the Tourism Expo in a few months. Uh, journalist Taonga Sabola caught up with Kamtukure in this interview. We had been struggling, especially after the COVID-19, for us to get back. Can you imagine we dropped from close to a million to about 176,000. But at the moment, from last year alone, we have gone up those numbers, even to pre-COVID numbers. So we are now hitting close to a million, and uh, it keeps increasing. So which for me is a, is, a, is a very good indicator that tourism has, has taken off. But also, I think it is, it is very important for us to note that it's not just because we held the expo. It is because it's a, it's a col co collective effort of all the activities that we've been doing, both as a ministry and also as a sector, and also the, the, the efforts of our, 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 our tour operators as well, the, pri the private sector as well, our business agencies as well, whatever it is that they've been doing has been bearing fruit. So the expo, yes, what the expo did was to announce to the, to the, to the, to the outside world, both domestically and also outside internationally, to say tourism, Malawi is back. And uh, that's why we called it, uh, we are back, Ipatse Moto, because we wanted, we did Yatse Moto. So after Moto, Jogawi at Somadan. And that's exactly what we're doing in this year. This year's uh, expo is on the 25th to 27th of uh, April uh, 2024. Uh, why we have done that is because uh, from the last year's expo, a lot of people complained that uh, the time was short because I think we held it under one and a half days. So people said, no, we, we didn't have enough time for us to experience and interact. The other thing is that we have increased the time. So instead of us knocking off at five o'clock, we are going to be uh, closing the, the exhibition area around 8 o'clock or even 9 p.m. to give people more time so people can go to work. But those that want to come back and, and, and visit our exhibitions and interact with our operators, uh, both local and international ones, will have time to do that even after work. So, yeah, I just wanted to confirm that this uh, year's expo shall be held here at the BICC from the 25th to 27th of April. And the greatest expectations is the number of exhibitors. So last year we were oversubscribed and um, we, we do believe that we're also going to be oversubscribed this year where we're going to have an, a, big, a bigger number. But also I think the participating countries that are coming, uh, we have always had South Africa and Zimbabwe uh, coming to support us. Uh, but I think, and, and also Tanzania, but this year we, want, uh, we, are, we, are, we are going to host uh, Tanzania, Kenya, Zambia, uh, Botswana as well, I think for the first time, 
uh, Zimbabwe and, and, and other countries as well. And also I think uh, we have our key source markets. So we have the UK, the Netherlands, Germany, and the USA that have always been our key source markets. But this year also we are looking towards, uh, I think, targeting China, Italy, as well as France as our new key source markets. We are already uh, receiving visitors from there, but we want to enhance uh, those visitors. So I think we are making deliberate efforts to bring in even hosted buyers from those countries as well. Yes, uh, a sponsor comes in just to sponsor you in an ad hoc manner. They, they give you money and then that's it. We want to partner with people that believe in our country, people that believe in the potential of tourism, people that believe in the development of this country, that Malawi has a future, Malawi has a potential for growth, to be uh, uh, at par with other African countries as well. And so we want to hold hands with those people. And um, so... I want to look at a company or an individual, or a small, however small they may be, however big they may be, that I can look beyond my shoulders and I'll see them and I'll say, oh, we need that support, or they can also come to us. Because, you know, when we're talking about partnerships, it means it's mutually beneficial. It's based on mutual respect. So it's just not like we are being parasites, where we're just getting money uh, from the company and that's it. What is it that the company is also going to benefit? from sponsoring or partnering with the Minister of Tourism uh, in delivering uh, the Tourism Expo, but also beyond that. Our overall um, uh, objective as a ministry is to develop and promote tourism in this country. And so we want to partner with individuals, institutions, uh, organizations in, in terms of de developing uh, tourism in the, in the country for the long haul and not just uh, to deliver the Expo alone. You're watching Business Time on Times, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country with me, William Kumwembe. We'll be right back. Kumalawi, to my name, Nagudi, to my name, Muntak. The boy is in the zone. Muntak is in the zone. Zina Langa, the Chris Gadiman. The one is in the Banja Langa, the Guilan Chiro Kugala Max, Macademy and Art Farm. Zon says, my ambila banaza lebano. Tima samalila mpugila, kutiti kwa nitse kuzala mitengo ya mbili. Mitengo yi kagula, tima sanka mwonte za wabu ino kwa mbili oka oka. Tima funa kuti nite za wabu akademi ya wabu malawi, uzidzu hika kuti ndo wabu ino kubosa. Tika gulula kwa mbili, tima lemba so nchito antu wa mbili. Tima kala onyadila, kukala na ote nga mbali mzimenezi. From the soil comes endless possibilities. That's why Old Mutual is investing for the long term from the ground up. We call this creating mutual futures. Old Mutual, let's do great things every day. a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country and my name is William Kumwembe. Moving on with the program. After the November 2023 44% devaluation of the Kwacha, President Lazarus Chagwera ordered the Competition and Fair Trading Commission to conduct a market surveillance to determine firms and companies that were charging excessively in as far as prices of commodities is concerned. Now, Lloyd's Banda is Competition and Fair Trading Commission Executive Director, and he caught up with our journalist, Taonga Sabola, to discuss outcome of the study. As FTC, in collaboration with our parent ministry, the Minister of Trade, as well as the Minister of Finance, uh, to conduct uh, the due uh, price surveillance exercises. Uh, by the way, by the time the directive was being made, uh, some of our teams then were already on the market uh, conducting a similar exercise because we knew the importance of finding out what was happening on the market so that we can uh, advise uh, the stakeholders accordingly. So uh, after the directive of 15th of November, actually we have carried out uh, three more price surveillances uh, across the country. Uh, the initial ones we targeted the major cities and towns and then after that we spread the exercises to, to the rural areas just to have a picture of what is uh, averring uh, in the towns and cities vis-a-vis -vis 
what was availing in the cities because the complaints we are getting uh, were that I think the people, especially in the rural, were being hit the hardest in terms of uh, that wayward pricing. So uh, to cut it short, we responded positively and according to our mandate, we have done uh, what we needed to do and if you recall, uh, I think in December or so, we issued a press uh, statement uh, which was issued by the ministry, but in collaboration with us, where we had given an indication of how many companies we had flagged through that exercise. There were others whom we flagged, looking at the magnitude of those price increments. And after that, uh, now we have gone into, through the processes of uh, investigations so that we see those cases to the rightful conclusions. We are indeed in a liberalized market where if you look at the players, they would say, no, we are free to set the prices as, as we fail. But uh, as a competition and fair trading commission, one of our primary functions is to protect consumers. And one of the areas where consumers need protection is protection from exploitation, which comes primarily uh, in the form of pricing. So for the consumers to enjoy the benefit of the market liberalization, that's where we come in. Because if that liberalization is just left, uh, just anyhow, uh, other players come in and take advantage of that uh, to start exploiting consumers. So that's where we are and that's how we come in. So much as uh, uh, it's a liberalized market, uh, government, we are there to ensure that that liberalization process does not lead into hurting uh, the very consumers whom uh, we are established to, to help and protect uh, so that they are not exploited in any way. Also what happens, uh, and this is an area where we need a lot of uh, understanding from the stakeholders, uh, is that uh, once we, like the companies which we said we flagged, after we had flagged the process that happens then, is that we formally issue what we call the notice of investigation to them, uh, which spells out the facts of the matter to say the commission now has started investigating you and the nature of the violation is this and we quote our, our act and then the particulars of that alleged violation has to be spelled out uh, to that particular company. Now in other business news, CDH Investment Bank has a new Chief Executive Officer and he is Toko Mkavea. In this interview with Chimwemwe Mangazi, Mkavea discusses his aspirations and vision for the bank going forward. My vision is to take the bank uh, really far forward. Um, first of all, uh, I want to tell you that we are a very good resource. Uh, our human resource is probably one of the best in this market. Uh, we have 97 employees, all of them are very wonderful individuals. Um, we specialize, as you're aware, in investment banking, uh, corporate financial advisory services that are very unique. Uh, we also have a commercial bank and treasury division, which also does trading of financial securities. Um, there's a lot of scope for growth in Malawi, and that scope for us is being fed by the needs of our customers. I'm sure we are all aware we are a third world uh, country, uh, still with a lot of development to be done. Our infrastructure uh, still requires investment, and that's where our uh, advisory expertise come from. Uh, based on the work that we do, we create financial securities in order to insource funders. Uh, some of those funders are pensions, individuals, as well as international investors who may be interested to help invest in a project uh, in Malawi, uh, either for uh, social service provision or for commercial purposes. Uh, we sit in the middle to facilitate investment uh, by looking at the investor, uh, making sure that an investment or a project of that nature responds to an investor's needs, as well as provides the needs uh, of the project promoters. It could be government or corporates. As I said, uh, in summary, uh, we still have a way to go. Uh, there's a lot of scope for work to be done uh, by an investment bank of our nature. I have uh, sufficient experience, uh, I believe, uh, in this industry. 
Uh, we have also executed together as a team uh, various transactions, uh, uh, created relationships uh, internationally as well as locally. Um, I believe with the team that I have, we'll be able to take this back to greater heights. CDH Investment Bank uh, sets itself apart uh, by employing uh, intellectual capital. Um, I emphasize the people that we work with, and the people uh, are very adaptable. Uh, every situation, uh, they come out winners. Uh, it always amazes me how they do that. But I hope you appreciate that uh, whenever there's a challenge, uh, there's a need. And that need will always require someone to look at and work on. Uh, and that's how we convert uh, the challenging economic situations, uh, whatever it may be, into opportunities, because there's always uh, an opportunity to serve. Well, that interview also brings us to the end of today's edition of the program, Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. On behalf of the entire production team, my name is William Kumwembe. Stay safe, but always remember, if it doesn't make money, then it doesn't make sense. Bye for now. Brought to you by Old Mutual. Creating mutual futures, your money invested for the good of all.